Hello, this is Daniel Kilburn with Emergency Action Planning and the ACT ASAP podcast. Merry Christmas. That's right, today is Christmas Day, which is also the start of the 12 days of Christmas. Now, Christmas is sometimes refer- referred to as 12 Tide, and this is another name for the festive Christmas season that celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. And it starts on Christmas Day, December 25th, and ends on January 5th of the following year. This is known as the Twelfth Night or Epiphany Eve. Now today is day one. And during the 12 days of Christmas, my gift to you is leadership. It is vital for you to know that right now, real leaders are really needed in the world at this time in history. And if you are a parent, it's my wish that you become one. Now there are many acceptable leadership styles, tactics, and techniques, and they vary widely based on the platform they're meant to be used in. They can work in the military, in the business community, theology, education, and the arts. Now each of these platforms or professions have differing differing rules of engagement for acceptable leadership practices in those professions. <coughs> Excuse me. During this monograph here, I'm going to discuss and reveal some of my thoughts on being a leader and how they can affect our families, our businesses, and our communities. Now these thoughts are based on years of leadership development, personal training, practice, things I've read, and direct observation. Now, first of all, one thing to keep in mind, take notes. There are three things you must do to become a true leader. Number one, you must be teachable. That's right, you must be teachable. Leadership is not a a one and done type of event. It's an ongoing process that morphs into something new as we progress as individuals. As our leadership capabilities and skills progress, as our responsibilities progress, we quite often need to learn new things to maintain our high level and our high standards of leadership. So you have to be teachable. Two, celebrate the small wins. I know this sounds weird, doesn't it? But it makes sense. When you achieve a goal or an accomplishment, no matter how small it is, celebrate it. Celebrate it with your children. Celebrate it with your family. Celebrate these achievements with your business associates. Celebrate them within your community because what they do is they'll help build and stack onto your understanding and your knowledge that you can accomplish things. Which is great because you want to accomplish much more. And finally, the third thing you need to do is avoid the mindset that somehow you've become an expert just because you've achieved a goal or completed a specific task. No, you're not an expert. You've achieved a goal, you've completed a specific task. That doesn't mean you're an expert at it. It'll take years and years. I have been teaching disaster management planning for decades and I'm not an expert at it yet. I'm still learning things. I'm still teaching things. And it's a wonderful experience to know that I'm not an expert, but I'm so certainly much better than most people out there. And that's where you can be, much better than most people out there. So through my lifetime, I've dis- discovered three distinct types of leaders, and I call that the three T's, T, of leadership. Number one, what I call the transitional leader. The transitional leader is the sometimes leader. They come and go. There's many reasons for this. One is they might be called into a major business to perform a specific task, like a consultant or a coach. Okay, That's a transitional leader. Another type of transitional leader is basically a manager. Now they need to lead and because they're a manager they think they can do something. So they get up they perform whatever that task is and then they put it away, put it back in the shelf. They're transitional, they're not always there. 
The second type of leader is a transactional leader. Now you know what I'm talking about is the with them, what's in it for me type of guy. You know, our politicians, big business are usually transactional leaders. What can they get out of you to promote themselves or to gain for themselves? Now the, there's pros and cons to this. We have transactions all the time. You know, if I want something to accomplish for myself, I might have to step into a transactional mode with somebody else to accomplish it. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we're looking at leadership traits and potential, it's very detrimental to society and business and the community as a whole. Because most transactional leaders will readily throw their employees their constituents, their family members under the bus for their own personal gain. And then third, there's the transformational leader. The transformational leader eats last. That's right. They make sure everybody is taken care of before they attend to their own needs. The transformational leader will turn down the end of the year bonus to make sure people stay at work. The transformational leader will not think about what's in it for me, but what's in it for you. What can I do for you to help you achieve your goal? That's the transformational leader. and That's who we want to be. Now when we're looking at leadership, there's basically five levels. These are based on teachings by John C. Maxwell. And the first level is position. Now positional leaders, basically a position of authority based on a title. And because of that title, you're a leader, whether you know it or not. And people follow you because they have to. They have to. Usually, People in junior management positions are positional leaders because the people below them will do what they need to do, what they're told to do, because if they don't, they're going to get fired. Okay, this is the basic starting level. We all start there. That's okay. Understand that. The second level of leadership is permission leadership. Now, permission leadership steps up a level and people choose to follow the positional or the permission leader because they want to. They give permission to follow, whatever that reasoning might be. They, they like your idea, they like your, your design, they like whatever you're working with. So they choose to follow you, to work with you, to see what you can accomplish together. The third type of leader is the production leader. Now this is somebody who simply gets things done. Now a production leader can be good, bad, ugly, and different. Okay, they can be a transactional leader, they can be a transformational leader, they can be a transitional leader. But they get things done and people follow them because they hitch their horse on the rising star. Okay, now this again can be good, bad, or indifferent. They get things done, sometimes it's good to be around somebody that gets things done, maybe we learn something from them, which is always very nice. The Next leader is called the people development level of leadership. Now this is where true leaders start really coming into their own because they're developing other people in leadership positions. Now as a parent, it's my job to develop my children into positions of leadership so they don't have to rely on me all the time to attend to them and their needs. They're growing up. They need to learn how to do that themselves. Within the business platform. The people development leader is developing people to do his job so he doesn't have to look over their shoulder, doesn't have to micromanage these people. They have a level of trust and the people who are below him or her will do their jobs because they're being trained how to do it. And the people development level of leadership wants that to happen so that way that individual can rise even higher. And the fifth level of leadership is called the pinnacle. Now the pinnacle is the highest level, it's the hardest one to reach, and your goal at this level is to identify how and what you're willing to invest in your, from your life in the long run of those people you're leading. Now this is where I'm speaking to you parents here. 
My daughters are grown adults. I have grandchildren. They're, my daughters are still my little girls. I'm willing to invest everything I possibly can, even though they're grown adults. They do their own thing, but I will still do what I can to assist them and develop them so they raise their leadership and create more wonderful things in the world. Again, this is based on teachings by John C. Maxwell. There's a link down here somewhere in the blog, or if you're listening to the podcast, there'll be a link somewhere in the notes that you can go to some of his readings and discover this for yourself. The next thing I want to talk about are distinctions of leadership. There are 12 distinctions of leadership, and these are based on the teachings by Michael Strassner. Number one, leaders have a powerful vision. A powerful vision. Now I'm going to read it right out of the book here. This is, you can find it in this book here, Mastering Leadership by Michael Strassner. Interesting read. But a, a powerful vision. Vision is an act of power of anticipating that which will or will or will not or may come to be. So what do you want to come out of your mouth and into life? What do you want to speak to be true? In the operational context, having a vision overtakes your ego, your hubris, because whatever it is that you have a vision of, you believe so grandly in, so importantly in, and so special in, that you must have it happen, it must become true, and you don't care what the cost is. Now, there's 11 more distinctions, and I'm just going to briefly name them. We're not going to go over them right now because this will take hours. Uh, number two, leaders are committed to that vision. Leaders live by the values that are consistent with their vision. Leaders are inspirational and enroll others and empower others into their vision. Leaders, leaders are change masters and leaders are risk takers. Leaders are responsible for it all. Leaders are expert communicators and they see obstacles as opportunities. Leaders are wise thinkers. They have incredible strength of character and they develop leadership in others. Again, based on the teachings from Michael Strassner, you can read about it in the book Mastering Leadership. And there's a link below with a, um, a podcast where he discusses these 12 points with uh, some other people. It'd be worth listening to. So as I noted earlier, the first distinction of leadership is vision. And I have a vision. My vision is to protect our children from the emergencies and disasters that will come into their lives. My mission is to prepare their parents to protect their children from them. Now, if you're the kind of person who likes to have total control of every aspect of your life, I've got something for you. That's right, I do. It's called leadership. You cannot live a life of excellence without it. Connect with your children at a level deeper than you thought possible. Instill leadership in your children. Create an open line of communication with your children and develop resiliency that your children will take with them long after you are gone. So step up and lead in your family, in your business, and in your community. Step into the lives of your children, learn from them and teach them and step out into the world with your children so you can do beautiful things. This is Daniel with Emergency Action Planning. Until next time, be safe.